Uh, hi everybody, today what I want to do is I want to try to calculate the total electric field at the center of this square. So I've placed four point charges on the vertices of the square. Um, they have different magnitudes, some are positive, some are negative. And what we want to do now is look at all of the contributing vectors at the center, right? What is the electric field produced by each charge and how would you add them all up as vectors in order to get the total electric field? Okay, let's go to the next page and start setting up this problem. All right, so I have a square that has a length of five centimeters. And what I want to do now is I want to look at the total vector the total electric field produced by these four charges. So I just first want us to remember a couple conventions which are very, very important, okay? What about the direction of the electric field produced by a charge? So we have either positive or negative charges, okay? There is a convention, right? The field produced by a positive point charge points away from that charge. The field produced by a negative charge points toward it. Okay, so that's going to be very important. And what about the magnitude? So how big is the vector? How do we calculate the magnitude of a vector, of an electric field? Now, you can write it as the magnitude of any vector. I'm just going to call this E. You can write it as this, 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 multiplied by the magnitude of the charge divided by the distance squared. Okay, so this is how we calculate the magnitude. Now, sometimes in some textbooks, you can group these together because this is simply a constant value. Epsilon zero is the permittivity to free space. It's simply a number, okay? But all of this you can group together as one constant and some people call it the constant K, which kind of simplifies this expression for the magnitude of the charge, which you can write it as K, Q divided by R squared. Now, the value of this constant K ends up being approximately nine times 10 to the nine. Now this comes in units of Newton's meters squared per Coulomb squared. Okay, uh, what about the value R? Well, let's have a look at this square for a minute. First of all, all of these charges are going to be the same distance from the center. And if I go ahead and I mark it down here, this is the value R that I'm looking for that's going to appear in the denominator for all of these values. So how would you do it? Well, again, if you think about this for a minute, if this is a square, that means that this distance right here is simply half the distance. So you can write r equals square root. Again, a over two is the length of each side. So there's two of those factors. And now while well, you simply just do a little bit of math, this is a squared over two. I can take an a out of that square root term and I'm left with r equals to this value here, a over root two. And you can write this in various different ways, but we know the distance now for each charge to the center, and we're gonna need that in this expression for electric field. Let's now plot the electric field vectors produced by each one of these charges at the center. Let's go to the next page. All right, let's now plot some vectors on our diagram here. We're gonna plot the vectors produced by uh, the electric field produced by each of these point charges using our convention here. So let's look at our positive charges first. So we have Q1 of 10. So that's going to produce an electric field at the center that points away from it. So I'm going to draw a vector and I'm going to call it the vector E1. All right, what else? The other positive charge is a 20 nanocoulomb. Actually, it's bigger than the first one, right? It's twice as big. However, the electric field produced by Q3 at the center is a vector that points away from it. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make it a little bit bigger, right? It should be twice the length, right? Because the charge is twice as big and the distance is the same. All right, let's now look at our two negative charges. So we have a Q4 charge down here in the lower left-hand corner. This is going to produce an electric field that points toward it. That is our convention, right? So I'm gonna call this vector here E4, okay? And our last one, guess what, is a charge Q2, it's negative. So the electric field produced by Q2 at the center is a vector that points toward it. This is going to have a vector E2. Okay, so we have four vectors now. The other thing we know is that this is a square, so all of these angles have to be 45 degrees. 
Okay, so we know quite a bit about it. Now what we can do is look at the magnitude of each one of those vectors. So let's have a look and we can start writing this down. So the magnitude of E1, again, I'm not worried about the whether or not the charge is positive or negative. That only tells me the direction of these vectors. So here I just want to get a positive number for the magnitude. So it's going to be the value K. It's the value Q1 divided by R squared. And R is the value that I found earlier. Okay. How about E2? Uh, E2, again, it's produced by a negative charge, but I don't really care. So all I do here is I do K, Q2, and we'll put an absolute value there. I already know the direction of that vector, divided by R squared. All right, let's keep going. E3. Uh, E3 now is this long vector. It's produced by this positive charge. The magnitude is K. Uh, there's no need for absolute value for this one because the charge is positive. So I just write it as Q3 divided by R squared. And our last one here is E4. E4 is produced by the negative 10 nanocoulomb. I know the direction, so I'm just going to put the magnitude of the charge right here and call this KQ4 over R squared. Now, some of these are equal to each other, right? Because the magnitude of some of these charges, like Q1, and the magnitude equals to Q4, we can right away, we should be able to say that this here, the magnitude, again, has to be equal to E4. And what else do we have? Well, there is something we can say about both of those magnitudes, right? Uh, if I look at the charges Q2, and look at the charge Q3, they have the same magnitude. One's positive, one's negative, but they both have the same magnitude. So both of those vectors have to be the same, right? So E3 and E2, the length of them have to be the same. This simplifies things quite a bit. There is one other simplification we can make, right? Because, let's have a look. What do we have? These guys are 10 nanocoulombs and the other charges are 20 nanocoulomb. So guess what? If you're just comparing how big the vectors are, we should be able to say that we have one other expression here, that the magnitude of E3, all right, which is equal to the magnitude of E2, is actually two times the magnitude of E1 and E4, which equals to two times E4. Okay, and this is really, really important. Again, here, let me just emphasize here that I'm only talking about the magnitudes of those vectors and not the direction. I've taken the direction into consideration when I have uh, plotted these vectors. So now let's go on the next page, and now we have to add up all of these contributions in order to find what is the total electric field as a vector right at the center, because this is really what I'm interested in for this problem. All right, so this is what we have so far. We have our magnitude of these two vectors, E1 and E4. They're the same. And I have also know that the magnitude of E2 and E3 are the same. They're actually twice as long as these other ones. So what we're going to do now is let's go back and just kind of clean this up a little bit. Okay, instead of writing E2, I can write E2 as simply two times E1. Let's write everything here just in terms of just one value. Instead of writing E3, again, I can write it as 2 times E1. This is going to make my life easier. Instead of writing E4, I know the direction. E4, I can also write as E1. Okay, now everything here is written in terms of E1. Pretty straightforward. So now the math becomes much simpler. All right, our goal now is to add all of these up as vectors. There are many, many ways of doing this, okay? Um, Let's kind of break it down. I would deal with them two by two, okay? So let's first look at the top two vectors. The top two vectors look like this, right? There's a vector 2E1 acting like that. There's another vector 2E1 acting like this. For the bottom pair, there's the two over here, right? In the third and the fourth quadrant. They both have a magnitude E1, and they're both pointing like this. Like, again, when you add up four vectors, you can always just break them up into pairs, and at the end, we have to add the top and the bottom contribution. But any vector now, you can break down into components, right? This 2e vector has an x component, and the other 2e vector also has an x component. Now, you should convince yourself that both of these are going to cancel out. What you're left with now is the y component of each one of those. You see that the y component of each of these black vectors is pointing up. 
And how would we calculate this component? Well, it's the magnitude, right? Each one of these has a y component. So it would be 2e1, and then you have to multiply by cos of the angle theta, cos of 45 degrees. Now there's one on the other side which has the exact same value, right? This is also E1y, which is 2E1 cos of 45 degrees. Okay, so you have to add both of those contributions together in order to get the total electric field pointing up. You don't have to worry about anything like this because those are going to cancel out those two components. Well, guess what? The same thing can be said down here at the bottom, right? At the bottom, if I take this vector E1 in the fourth quadrant, I could break it down into two components. All right, I could do the same thing with the vector over on this side. I could break it down into two components. Okay, again, you could see right away that the X components are going to cancel out, right? Forget about those ones. What we're left with here is that each one of these is going to have an X component, okay, sorry, a Y component rather, right? So each one here has a Y component and the Y component is simply going to be E1 uh, cos of 45 degrees. Likewise with this guy, right? This guy here also has a Y component to that vector, which is E1 cos of 45 degrees. So now you have to put them all together. So my total electric field has to be in the y direction. So we're going to add everything as vectors. There's four contributions. Okay, look at, we have two here, one, two, and then we have two here. Two of them, these guys here are pointing down. So remember, you have to add things up as vectors. So this is what it ends up looking like. So you get two E1 cos of 45 plus, again, the same thing, two E1 cos of 45, and now we're going to get minus E1 cos of 45, and then minus E1 cos of 45. Okay, this simplifies a lot, right? This is 4 E1 cos of 45 minus 2. At the end, my final expression should be 2 E1 cos of 45 after I do the algebra. So let's go on the next page and finish this problem off and calculate some numbers. All right, our last step here, let's just remember to add our direction here for the uh, electric field, which we said was uh, in the y direction. So let me just make sure I add a j hat over here, and maybe right here at the end. Okay, so now we wanna calculate that uh, electric field magnitude. All right, so E total, uh, two E1, cos of 45 degrees in the j hat direction. Let's start plugging in some other things that we know. So the magnitude of E1, we've calculated up here. It's K, Q1 divided by R squared. That's E1, and then we still have cos of 45 degrees. Again, in the J hat direction. So now we could substitute in all our numbers. So we get two. Our K value was nine times 10 to the nine. The charge Q1 here is 10 nanocoulombs. That's 10 times 10 to the negative nine divided by r squared. Now, what is r squared? Well, it's the value a divided by root two, and a was five centimeters. If I convert that to meters, it's 0 0.05 divided by square root of two, and you have to square that distance. All right, multiplied by cos of 45 degrees. Now, you have to be really careful when you plug everything into the calculator here. It's not kind of that easy, and you can kind of simplify things if you want. But at the end of the day, when I calculate E total, um, I should get a value that looks like this. Uh, 1.02 times uh, 10 to the 5. The electric field is measured in newtons per coulomb. And again, that direction may be at the J hat over here. Okay, it has to be in the vertical direction. Um, again, we've used some symmetry in order to simplify some of those vectors. Use the fact that some charges were twice as much as others, so which made some of those vectors twice as big as others. Uh, I've argued also that there can't be any component of the field along the x direction because of just the way these vectors are, right? Same length, and uh, all these x components cancel out. We're only left with a vertical electric field. Let me go ahead and draw that one in the figure. The total electric field would simply look up like this and its magnitude would be 1.02 times 10 to the 5. All right, thanks for watching, folks.